Hello there guys, welcome back to another epic and extra raw maths video. In this video we're looking at the Laplace transform of t times f of t, where f of t is a function that you already know how to take the Laplace transform of. So for example, in this video we're going to learn how to take the Laplace transform of something like, let's say, t times e to the 2t, or maybe t times sine 5t, or something like that because you already know how to take the Laplace transform of e to the t and sine t and cosine t and functions like that. In fact, if you know how to take the Laplace transform of any function, you will now know how to take t times that function, at the end of the video that is. Also in this video, we're gonna look at t to the power of n times f of t's Laplace transform, where n is a natural number. So for example, we're also going to see that we can take the Laplace transform of something like t squared times e to the whatever t, or t cubed times cosine of something t, things like that. So that's, that's what we're going to do in this video. Let's just dive straight into this, guys. It's quite a fun one because it involves differentiation under the integral sign and a bunch of fun stuff like that. So we're going to do something a bit differently. Normally, we like to write our Laplace transform in terms of the kind of integral formula, right? In terms of that integral. So we might be tempted to write the Laplace transform of t f of t as the integral from zero to infinity of t f of t e to the minus st dt. And then maybe you want to try something with integration by parts or something like that. But there's a nicer way. So let's consider for a second just normal f of s. So normal, just f of s, capital F of s. This is the Laplace transform, of course, of just f of t, not t f of t. So normal f of s is the integral from zero to infinity of just f of t times e to the minus st. This is just literally the plain old factory reset Laplace transform. It's just completely normal. But we're gonna do something quite cool. What we're gonna do is we're going to differentiate both sides with respect to s, not t. And so what we'll get is we will get that the first derivative of capital F of s is equal to the derivative with respect to s of the integral from zero to infinity of f of t e to the minus st dt, right? Now, how do we deal with this? Well, it turns out that we can bring the derivative inside of the integral and differentiate the inside. So this will be the integral from zero to infinity of, and then the typical convention is when you move the derivative inside of an integral, it becomes a partial derivative. So I'm going to write it with curly d's like this, but it's still with respect to s. This just means the partial derivative. If you've seen the partial derivative before, then this will make perfect sense. If you've not seen it before, just imagine that it's the normal derivative. Don't worry about the notation, just pretend that they're the same. All the partial derivative is, is it's differentiating a multivariable function with respect to, in this case, s. Notice that this function here is a function of t and s. So we only want to differentiate it with respect to s. And we don't need to use the chain rule or anything like that. We just pretend that t is a constant in the s world. So what we get is that the derivative of capital F of s is the integral from zero to infinity. And now this term, f of t times e to the minus st, we're going to differentiate this with respect to s. So what will happen? Well, f of t is a constant in the s world because it does not have any s's in it. So we can write f of t how it normally is. And then we need to look at the e to the minus st term. We're differentiating not with respect to t but with respect to s, which means what will happen is this time a t, because t is a constant, will come down in front of this and we'll end up with a t inside there and then we will get an e to the minus s t d t and also because we brought down a negative t there will also be a negative sign in front of this integral i hope that makes sense so we've differentiated this term here with not respect to t but with respect to s and that's why a negative t has come down not a negative s 
because s is the variable that we're differentiating with respect to. If we were differentiating with respect to x, for example, the derivative of e to the x is not x e to the x or anything like that. The variable that you're differentiating with respect to does not come down. It's the coefficient in front. In this case, t is the coefficient in front, not s. That's why the t has come down. Hope that makes sense. Lovely. But the reason we've done this is because now look at the inside of that integral, or in fact, look at the entire integral. It's the integral from zero to infinity of t f of t e to the minus st dt. But this on the right hand side is the definition of the Laplace transform of t f of t, right? Because it's the same thing, but just with a t inside two. So that means that the first derivative of capital F of S is, and we also have a negative sign, a negative Laplace transform of T F of T. Because this integral is the definition of the Laplace transform of T F of T. That means that if I just swap everything round and multiply both sides by negative one, then we get that the Laplace transform of T F of T is just the negative derivative of capital F of S. So if you want to find the Laplace transform of T F of T, if you know what F of S is, and F of S is just the Laplace transform of F of T, if you know what F of S is, you just differentiate that, make it negative, that gives you the Laplace transform of T F of T. We're going to do an example at the end of this video, so don't worry too much about it. Now, if the T was, for example, a T squared, what would happen? Well, let's have a look. Let's say that once again, f of s is the integral from zero to infinity of f of t e to the minus st dt, right? Again, this is the definition of the Laplace transform. If we differentiate this again uh, with respect to s, then on the inside of this integral, once again, as we just had, we end up with, and also let me, uh, let me move that back a little bit so I can fit a negative sign in front. The derivative here of f of s is equal to the negative integral from zero to infinity of just t f of t e to the minus st dt. However, we don't want that. What we want is the Laplace transform of t squared f of t. So how could we get a t squared on the inside of that integral? Well, why don't we do it again? And if we do that, then we will get that the second derivative of f of s is equal to, and then what's gonna happen here? If we differentiate the inside of this integral with respect to s, the t, the negative t in fact, will come down again. Now the negative that's coming down will cancel out with the negative that's already there, and you will end up with the positive integral from zero to infinity of t squared f of t e to the minus st dt. And this, is the definition of the Laplace transform of t squared f of t, isn't it? Like that. So we can see here that we get this result. So the Laplace transform of t squared f of t is just the second derivative, and there's no negative sign. And what you will find is, and you can do this, you can prove it by induction if you want to, we're not gonna do it, but if you wanted to, you would find that the Laplace transform of t to the n f of t, like so, is just negative one to the n times the nth derivative of f of s. So f n of s. Some people like to write this as negative one to the n and then d n d s to the n capital F of S, like that. So these are the same thing, right? Nth derivative, nth derivative, it's just a different notation, but they're the same thing. So some people like to write it like that. In either case, they're the same. So this is a kind of generalized formula for any power of t um, times F of t for the Laplace transform of that. So let's just do an example. So this is the question. We're gonna take the Laplace transform of t cubed times e to the minus 2t. Notice again, it's in the same format. It's t to the power of a uh, natural number times some function that we can and know the Laplace transform 
of. So we can take the Laplace transform of f of t. In this question, f of t is e to the minus 2t. So if you want to do a question with this, the first thing that we need to do is realize that capital F of s is the Laplace transform of e to the minus 2t. What is the Laplace transform of e to the minus 2t? It's going to be 1 over s minus and then the coefficient um, up here, which in this case is minus 2. So it's s minus minus 2, which is of course 1 over s plus 2, like that. Okay, so that's f of s. f of s is 1 over s plus 2. This is the Laplace transform of e to the minus 2t. Lovely. Okay, now we need to take three derivatives of 1 over s plus 2, because realize that the Laplace transform of t cubed times our f of t is going to just be minus 1 to the power of 3, which is minus 1, times the third derivative of f of s. So I'm going to write f of s as s plus 2 to the power of minus 1, because it's easier to differentiate that way. So now we're going to take our first derivative. So the first derivative of f of s, what will that be? Well, the minus 1, this is the chain rule, the minus 1 will come down, so we'll get a minus. The derivative of the inside with respect to s is 1, because it's 1s plus 2, so nothing happens. And then brackets, we end up with s plus 2 to the minus 2, because the power drops by 1. That's just the chain rule. Okay, second derivative. The minus 2 will come down and multiply by the minus 1, which gives you a positive 2. The derivative of the inside is 1 again, so nothing happens. And we get s plus 2 now to the minus 3. Lovely. And finally, the third derivative of f of s. Minus 3 times 2 is minus 6. Derivative of the inside of the brackets is 1 again, so nothing happens. s plus 2 now to the minus 4. Lovely. Okay. And then, because remember, it's minus 1 to the power of 3 multiplied by that, so this minus is going to disappear, what we will end up with is that the Laplace transform of t cubed times e to the minus 2t is just going to be positive, not negative, positive 6 times s plus 2 to the minus 4, which of course, if you wanted to, you could write as 6 divided by s plus 2 to the power of 4. Either way, maybe this is a bit nicer for you, personal preference, but this is what you get here. So this is the Laplace transform of t cubed e to the minus 2t. That's kind of how you use the formula. But note, of course, this would work for anything. So this could be t cubed times sine t or something like that. We can do questions like that in the future, but this is the kind of basics of how you use this situation right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I highly appreciate it as always, and I'll see you in the next video.